Hey everyone, welcome to Professor Long's Lectures in Anatomy and Physiology. I'm Professor Bob Long. These videos are intended for use for students who are enrolled in my class. If you're in someone else's class, learn what they want you to know. If these videos are helpful though, please hit like. If you want to subscribe to my channel, please do that too. What we are going over is some of the female anatomy. Um, and we're going to go over the breast and the ovary models. And I'm trying to find where they are on our list of things to know so I can tell you. Um, give me just a second. And I'm not sure where they are. Oh, the breast is on page 34. If you're looking on page 34, one of the structures you can re remove from the list is the hymen, by the way. We're not going to see that. But we're going to cover the breast and we're going to cover the ovary model. Now, the breast model is pretty simple. The breast, the part that protrudes from the breast, unless someone has an inverted nipple that sticks in, is called the actual nipple. But this um, pigmented tissue that surrounds the nipple is called the areola. So breast, areola, nipple. Now, if we open the breast up and we look inside of it, you notice the breast is mostly adipose tissue, okay? But there's these little bundles, this purple looking or violet looking tissue or whatever lavender color. These are called um, the lactiferous glands or the mammary glands. That's where milk is produced. So all of these little purple looking things or lavender looking things are called mammary glands or lactiferous glands. However, it appears on the list. The tubes coming out of the glands are going to carry the milk that's produced when we do the, what's called the milk letdown reflex. If you remember your hormones from early in the semester, prolactin causes milk production, oxytocin causes milk letdown. The milk letdown will cause milk to flow through these little dark channels down here, which are called lactiferous ducts. All of these little black lines are lactiferous ducts. If you look very closely as we get close to the nipple itself, the lactiferous ducts has these enlarged areas here that are called lactiferous sinuses. So during the milk letdown reflex, oxytocin causes some smooth muscle to squeeze in here, push the milk down through the lactiferous sinuses, and it sits in the lactiferous, I'm sorry, through the lactiferous ducts, and then it sits in the lactiferous sinuses, and as the baby suckles, it squirts the milk out through the papillae or the openings. Now, if you notice, some of the papillae are actually in the areola, the little bumps. Now, the last model we have to cover is the ovary model. Now, in lecture, you're going to hear me talk about, let me make sure this is in our frame, you're going to hear me talk about the stages of development of the ovarian follicle. The ovarian follicle starts off as what we call a primordial follicle, and then they mature into what's called a primary follicle, and then they get a little bigger, become a secondary follicle. Then they become a tertiary or graphene follicle. And then the egg is released. So these would be our primary follicles here. These are our secondary follicles here. And this is a tertiary or graphene follicle. You can see the cell in the middle is called the oocyte. So the entire round structure is primary follicle, secondary follicle, graphene or tertiary follicle. The little cell inside is the primary oocyte, secondary oocyte, and then the mature oocyte. And you can just say oocyte for all of them. Now, once ovulation occurs, the um, follicle ruptures and releases the egg into the fallopian tube. The remains of the follicle on slides will stain this yellow stain. And so they call this the corpus luteum. Corpus means body and luteal means yellow. So this is the corpus luteum it will seal up and retract into the ovary. And so sometimes several corpus lutea are uh, um, visible. This is an old one that is completely closed off and started to retract, and then they'll um, start to break down even more. But these two yellow things are corpus luteum. And that's where we release um, one of the hormones or several hormones from the corpus luteum. If the corpus luteum starts to continue to deteriorate, then it turns white and becomes these bodies, which are called corpus albicans. Alba meaning white. So corpus albicans, corpus albicans, corpus albicans. Um, if a female is fertilized and the egg implants, the embryo will start to release a hormone that maintains the corpus luteum and doesn't let it break down. And the corpus luteum will continue to secrete progesterone 
so that a female does not ovula, does not menstruate and therefore keeps the uterine lining to support the developing embryo. So there's a lot of um, endocrinology going on here and you guys need to go back and review all that endocrinology when we covered in lecture. Anyway, that's all the female reproductive models that we have, but I think that's enough. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I hope you learned something and I hope you work really, really hard practicing labeling these things until you can't stand it, do it till you understand it. Do it until you can teach it the way that I did without any notes. Then you'll make your A's. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.